Candle Pin Stars and Strikes is brought to you by the Thompson family of dealerships in Nashua, New Hampshire, and by Tri-State Megabucks and the New Hampshire State Lottery, helping New Hampshire schools one ticket at a time. WNDS Sports presents New England's favorite bowling show. From Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Featuring the best bowlers from around the region. Campbellton Stars and Strikes. And now your hosts, Dick Lutz and Mike Morris. Everybody and welcome into another season of Candlepin Bowling on Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV from Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. Dick Lutz with Mike Morin on this, the 20th anniversary year of WNDS TV. It's our seventh year together broadcasting Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and we pick up this year where we left off last year. It didn't take Jeff Surrett very long to get back in the saddle again after winning the Tournament of Champions. He's back for more to see if he can get seated before uh, the other guys get in for the April broadcast. Some veteran bowlers, some newcomers for you to see over the course of the next several weeks. Of course, you'll see the best Candlepin bowlers in the world each week here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Let's meet our bowlers here this afternoon in our first match of the new season. The defending Tournament of Champions winner, our number five seed from Tewksbury, Massachusetts. Let's first say hello to Jeff Surrett. Still spending his $2,000 first prize that he won last season. Averaging 128, high single 202, his high triple is 476, and his home bowling center where he's been uh, his entire life, Candlewood Lanes in North Reading. And Jeff rolled a 654 to earn the number five seed in this first ladder series of the new season. And he'll be taking on no stranger to the TV lights here at Lita Lanes, a veteran of the Candlepin Wars over the years. Let's welcome Steve Plant from Manchester. Still a relatively young man, but he's a senior bowler today at age 38. Average 124, he's had two high singles of 194 and high triple 468. Does his bowling right here, makes him a crowd favorite at Lita Lanes on Thursdays and Fridays. And Steve rolled a 657 to earn the number four seed in this latter series. Jeff Surratt and Steve Plant, let's get right to it. We begin our new season on Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after this. <laughs> We are ready to begin our first ladder series of the new season, and we start with five terrific bowlers. There you see Anthony Pastore as the top seed. Our first match this afternoon, Jeff Surrett and Steve Plant with Chris Sargent and Dave Hodge waiting in the wings. Jeff Surrett will be first to bowl here this afternoon at Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire, as we kick off our seventh season together, Michael. Seems like only seven years ago when we began. <laughs> 1997, yep. Great to be back, Dick. Jeff Surrett, the defending Tournament of Champions winner. He had a big year last year on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and he starts off with a spare. He made a few bucks on this show last year. Well, of course, the uh, Tournament of Champions top prize is $2,000 for starters. And then he won the ladder series to get there, and he had a lot of bonus money along the way, and... He had a pretty good year. Puts seven in the spare. We got a ton of mail to get to that was sent to us during the off season. And we'll spread it out over the course of the next several weeks. And another mark for Jeff Surrett. So he begins with a couple of marks right off the bat. And now we see Steve Plant from Manchester, New Hampshire. Steve's been on WNDS TV 14 times over the years. The lefty from Manchester gets a good break with the 9 and the 10 dropping in the back and now the 7 pin stands with some wood in front of it. And he missed it. Never as easy as it looks. And that would be a 10 box. Steve, 38 years old, works in sales for Frito-Lay, brought samples for everybody today. He knows how to buy the crown, doesn't he? Including us. He and Brenda have been married for 15 years. Their daughter, Amanda, is 10. And another spare opportunity for Steve Plant right off the bat. 
won the three, and there's no wood to, to mess him up. Ideal here is to go to the right of the center of the head pin. Missed it. So he's missed a couple of spare opportunities right off the bat, and Jeff Surrett grabs an early lead. And that will be a nine box. Where does the time fly, Michael? The summer zipped right by. It seems like it took about 15 minutes for the months of July and August to pass by. Did we have summer this year is the question everybody's asking with the cool temperatures. Here's Jeff Surratt working on the spare. Now looking for bonus money, $50 for three consecutive marks. He will not get $50. We have $500 in the triple strike jackpot. That starts all over again. $10 in our bonus ball contest at the end of the match, which we're going to change around a little bit this year and make it a little more appealing, we think. Yeah, putting a little wrinkle in it. And it came as the result of a listener and a viewer suggestion. Yep. So we do appreciate, appreciate your email on these things. Jeff right on the head pin, nine pin drop, and another spare opportunity. That's the four pin that still stands. Wood is of no use to him off to the right. Right on it. Three marks and four boxes for Jeff Surrett. So a he lot of people, Michael, sent us a copy of an article that appeared in the Worcester Sunday Telegram back in August about the colonial lanes in Worcester being the last surviving Candlepin bowling alley in Worcester. We'll talk more about that, but I want to thank everybody who sent us a copy of that article. We got a ton of them. I never saw that to, to begin with. This is a bowling center that you were familiar with? Since oh, you, sure, I you bowled there. Yeah. Grew up in Worcester. Did I ever tell you that I was from Worcester? I don't remember telling well, you that. Well, week one, we got that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> Worcester's favorite son is Dick Lutzk, and there's a nine for Manchester's son, Steve Plant, who's yet to get his first smudge on the score sheet. Of course, I don't know what you call it now that we keep score with the computer electronically. Back in the old days, we called it a smudge or a dirty spot. And he finally gets connected with the head pin, leaves the 7-9. And this one's going to go with him, with the wood that's set up out there for him. You can hit that any number of ways, as long as it's to the right of that center dead wood. There it is. First mark of the match for Steve Clay. And actually, I kind of misspoke. It's not dead wood. It's live wood. It's dead when it's in the uh, channel or in the gutter. A lot of people use those two words interchangeably, but uh, it's wood, live wood, when it's on the deck and can be used. It's like the eight pin kind of got nudged over almost uh, directly behind the one pin. It's probably three, four inches off its original spot. It's just right spread. behind the head pin. Not going to make it. Nine box. That's a 70 half for Jeff Surrett. Well, surely Bella Eunice of Auburn is the first person we'll credit with sending us in a copy of that article from the Worcester Telegram, which Mike is checking out right now. Nick Anderson, the last. Uh, proprietor of a bowling center in Worcester. Keeping it going. Well, Worcester, something. the birthplace of Candlepin Bowling. There's something very sad about the birthplace having just one bowling center left. And now, how many were there at the time that you were well, in the 60s in the when 20s, you bowled? It talks about, uh, in, in the article, it makes reference to bowling alleys being around the city like convenience stores. They were everywhere. There's Steve Plant with a nine. Phil in the spare. And an opportunity for another one. Two marks in a row for Steve Plant. So this this particular story ran on the front page. Page, page one of the Worcester August. Sunday wow. Telegram in August. Steve's right on the head pin again. Didn't get a real good break. Put seven in the mark. And he pulls within six pins of uh, leader Steve Sir, or Jeff Surratt. And this will make, this this spare goes. He's got to hit the right side of that front wood. That'll kick the ball into the five pin, the wood into the four and the seven. Oh, it didn't quite get to the five pin. 
story mentions the uh, Bullmore pin setting machines sure. that uh, have really been the workhorse stick of, of candle pin bowling automatic pin spotters over the years and I was just talking to a, uh, a Bullmore mechanic who works at Bolarama in Portsmouth who is with us in the audience today and he was telling me that the Bolarama took a lightning hit to back in August when we had that big storm knocked out all the circuitry you know for the automatic scoring and the, and the various video machines and such but the Bullmore machines were unaffected because they hung in there no circuitry uh, <laughs> Oh, there's a delayed reaction strike for Jeff Surrett. That one took a while. Here's our first strike, $500. As Dick Watch mentioned. it again if we have enough time. Here comes the ball into the Brooklyn side, and the back line, the 7, the 9, and the 10, took a while to go down in the spread eagle for Jeff Surrett, but he has a couple of balls to fill the strike, of course. They'll just put five in the strike. Here's a nice, smooth delivery. A seven box for Jeff Surrett. He's at 100 through eight. Dick, I don't know if you do, but uh, Jeff's father uh, had cancer. Had uh, some cancer surgery earlier this year and uh, is doing well and recovering nicely. Looked great. He's here today with his son and wanted us to pass along our Thanks to everybody who have sent him good wishes. Something I didn't realize that he, uh, he had been sick, but a lot of people did, and uh, he's doing well and wants everybody to know that he's here and he's fine. That's Thanks. great news. Yep. Great guy and a, a, certainly a bowling name from the past that I think a lot of people know. Steve planted another spare, so three spares in the last four boxes for Steve as he warms up. We're just about even in this first string. Missed the head pin, and we'll have the full horseman on the right side. Just four pins separate these two fine bowlers. Steve will not pick up the spare. He'll be open in the eighth, as was Jeff Surrett. And a nine box will pick up a couple more. A two-pin differential. Surrett with the lead by a deuce. Heading into the final two frames of this first string. A three-string match. Total pinfall. Determines the winner. The winner moves up the ladder to take on the number three seed, Chris Sargent. Another veteran of the Candlepin Wars. Right on the stripe, almost made the spare. He put it right where he wanted to and just didn't get a break. He'll be open in the ninth. Nine box for Jeff. Having troubles with your microphone? Yeah, there we go. You mentioned Chris Sargent. Uh, he was the winner of the Easter Sunday 20-string tournament here at Lita Lanes. $5,000, so he had a great year. Sean Baker was second, Dave Cookie Richards third, Mark Gregory fourth, Craig Holbrook fifth, all ball. Hamilton stars and strikes. And that will be a nine box for Jeff Surrett. He'll finish with a 118 for a string. Steve Plant with a chance to take the lead. Three, five, six, and nine. Nice shot. Steve Plant right on the money with that one. His fourth mark of the string, and he will take the lead. Called spares in Candlepin bowling. It looks e it looks tougher, tougher than it looks. On the spare, crossing over to the Brooklyn side. He'll put nine. back to the first two boxes of the string for Steve Plant. Two open frames, which he had very makeable spares. 
that he left on the table, he could have a really special yeah. first string. As it is, he's at 127 plus a ball. He'd have been in the 140s, 150s easily. He missed a seven pin and then he missed the 1-3 combination. Put seven in the spare and a 134 for a string for Steve Flint. And a 16-pin lead over Jeff Surrett. We're ahead of the string number two. When we come back, the Lita Lanes in Nashua, New Hampshire. You are watching Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNBS TV. All right, Steve Plant will be first to bowl in the second string at Lita Lanes in Nashua. He had a 134 in the first string to Jeff Surrett's 118, a 16-pin lead for Steve Plant over the defending Tournament of Champions winner. And Steve starts off the second string with a pocket shot, but leaves himself a tough split. Got the 6-7 with some wood on the deck. Now the question is, is that piece of wood to the left too far back to, to come across and take the 7-pin? He, he missed it anyway. We'll never know. Never know the answer to that one, Michael. Steve has bowled in the uh, Tournament of Champions. He bowled in 1996, which, by the way, never aired. And he bowled in the 1999 Tournament of Champions as well. Last time uh, he was on television was uh, back in March of uh, 2002. He was the number four seed and lost to young Danny Harris from uh, South Boston. 409-357. On lane 33, another one into the pocket. This time he breaks up the split and has a clean shot at the seven pin. The lefty makes the spare. So Steve Plant continues to apply the pressure on Jeff Surrett. Our bonus ball contest at the end of every match allows you at home to become involved with Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We encourage you to send in your postcard with your name, address, and information and pick a number from, well, from zero to 10, what you think our bowler will knock down for you. Our winning bowler will bowl a ball. What we're gonna do this year is we're going to pick the card ahead of the shot and let you know what number our bowler is shooting for. And that'll give the bowler something to go after and uh, We'll know what to expect. We'll try to match him up with the number that you pick. Adds a little element of uh, extra skill and luck, I suppose. Put a little more pressure on the bowler. The I bowler can already will. anticipate a lot of booing. When sure, <laughs> the bowler will know what he's going for. <laughs> Jeff Surratt, whoa, will he make it? Yes, he will. The ball came back to take it. One of those rarities where the ball bounces off the back wall and comes back. The ball remains in play. And the spare counts. Watch it again. Watch the ball. Keep your eyes on the ball if you can see it. There it comes, and there it goes. It takes out that pin. Here's Steve Plant. He's right on the pocket and a strike. I'll tell you, when he's hitting the pocket thin, he's getting wonderful action. Great sidewall action. As he really is. Punching through. He's found a groove, too. Well, he has. As you mentioned, he started off a little shaky with a couple of uh, missed easy spares, but boy, he's been banging them ever since. There's another one. Well, he'll be shooting for 500 bucks next time he stands up in the line. He has hit the triple strike jackpot before on television. That's true. Been a couple years for him. And he won $1,000. And it continues to go up $25 each week that it is not hit by one of the bowlers. I want to start acknowledging some of the letters that have been sent in. Some of them are too long to read all of them, but Dominic Civitaris, I hope I am pronouncing it correctly, from Dedham, Massachusetts, a longtime viewer of Candlepin Bowling. Going back to the old days on Channel 5, has been watching it for years and years and years. goes back to pre let's see how does he say it I go back to the days before they had pin setters so when they had uh, people setting the pins back in the uh, pre 50s anyway yep, in the early days so Jeff Surrett a couple of opens we're going to a break and when we come back Steve Plant's going to be shooting for a $500 
in the triple strike jackpot when we come back to lead a lane for Candleton Stars and Strikes on WNDS TV. Steve Plant has a couple of strikes on the board and he's shooting for three in a row. This will be worth $500 in our very first telecast of the brand new season. The jackpot's reset and this is a $500 shot. Look at this, look at this. What a shame. Very makeable spare. So another $25 in bonus money. He had 50 because he had three marks in a row. On fire, averaging 124. There's two leagues here at Lita Lanes. Thursday and Friday. Lots of fans here for the Manchester Bowler. Four marks in a row. The only one he missed was a very makeable spare in the first frame. And here's another nine pin drop. Look at that. 98 half, Dick. I do it all the time. And it's there. I was told, talk about great scores. I was told that one of our former competitors and probably future competitors of Candleton Stars and Strikes at Woodside had a 500 triple in league competition Did he? last weekend as we taped this show. Wow. 501 I think it was. A remarkable accomplishment. That's an average of 116.6. Here's Jeff Surrett responding with a spare of his own. Jeff Surrett will uh, represent Massachusetts in October's ICBA Championships in Canada. It's a 10-string singles event representing uh, New Hampshire will be Craig Holbrook. There'll also be a bowler for Maine and one from Canada. It'll be bowled in New Brunswick, Mass, New Hampshire, Maine, and Canada in the ICBA Championships. What a great shot by Jeff Surrett. Needing a mark to stay in the match, he converted a split that was absolutely perfect. Watch it again. He just made it perfectly. A great shot by Jeff Surrett. So he has a couple of marks in a row. But he's 55 pins behind Steve Plant. Steve Plant is piling on. Throw a penalty flag. Piling on by Steve Plant. Another mark. Six marks in a row. Plus he had a 10 in the first box. So he has, at least by Canelton bowling standards, a perfect game going meaning nothing standing. There's one right in the pocket again, and uh, that 10 in the first frame was a makeable spare that he just did not convert. Can he do it again? No, he missed this one. He double tripled the ball when he put it down at the line. It never got over to where he'd hoped. Stayed too far to the left. Six and the 10 remain. And that'll be a nine box. He's at 145 through eight. I'm ready to go, Jeff. Come on, throw it up. Jeff Surrett working on a couple of marks in a row now. Very capable of exploding himself. He'll put six in the spare. Not going to make the spare. Gave it a run, but he'll be open. Defeating uh, Mike Morgan in the turn of, Tournament of Champions, actually uh, a replay of which you saw last week. Yeah, games of 132, 107, and 123 back on May 11th, and the, like I said, you saw the replay last week. Nice pocket hit, but the, the uh, four and the uh, eight are still there. Steve Plant is showing no mercy here with a 70-pin lead. Not even two complete games yet. A mark in the eighth frame, four. Jeff Surrett have to reset the pins on lane 34. A couple of marks, and conceivably, Steve Plant could uh, be in the 180s. Um, yeah, reset it again, Steve. Got to reset it one more time. Yeah. Another problem with it. One pin shy. The seven pin wasn't there. So they'll reset the pins on lane 34, and we hope this time they're all there. 
Got the crack technical crew here ready to run back if necessary, and we are all set. Good to go. Steve wondering if you should move over to lane 33. Want to at least give the machine a couple cycles through so he can stay on the lane that he should be on, which is 34. That one's off the head pin. One of the few that has missed the head pin thrown by Steve Plant today. First game he missed a couple on the head pin, but after that deck, he's been just hitting it like crazy. Well, that was right on the head pin, but not much to show for it. 4-7 on the left, 6-10 on the right. And he will take two of them for an eight box. He's at 153 through nine. He's built up a considerable lead. It's back on the head pin, and can he break up the split? No, he cannot. A little more full on the head pin than he has been, and the result you see is a big split. where he wanted to hit it too but the wood apparently wasn't in a position to take it out so the 10 remains and if he makes that a 163 game a hundred and a quarter in bonus money to boot and that's a 10 box and a 163 for steve plant in a two string total 297 here's jeff surratt with a strike he was worried it wasn't going to go because one of the pins danced before it went down. Watch it again and watch that. I think it's the five pin that stays up and slides across a little bit. No, it wasn't the five. It was the eight pin before it finally tumbled down. Jeff Surratt looking for two in a row. Two, the four, and the six. With no wood to help him out. Your score on Surrett is not correct. We're going to have to back up on Surrett's score and, and get it squared away because he finished with an eight box and a total of 131 for Jeff Surrett, a two string total. I can get him out of my way. I can see it. I can't see we'll it get right now. For you, folks. 131 and a 249 for Jeff Surrett. We'll have all the totals squared away when we come back to Little Lanes in Nashville right after this on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Here's the scoreboard from the last string uh, corrected now with a 163 for Steve Plant and a 131 for Jeff Surrett. A 48-pin lead for Steve Plant heading to the third and final string at Little Lanes in Nashua and Jeff Surrett will be first to bowl in our third string. Trailing by 48 pins, a great second string for Steve Plant. We're ready to go. In string number three, Dick Lutz with Mike Morin and our entire crew from Lita Lanes. Nash, we're happy to have you with us. Four, six, seven, ten remain for the third shot for Jeff Surrett. He was 13th qualifying for this ladder to get into the, uh, the final position. But he ended up bowling a 145 and landed in the number five spot. And Dick, I can't remember a time when we had all five bowlers within 12 pins of each other from number one to number five seed. Here's a spare opportunity for Jeff Surrett. Uh, they were bunched up at the top, weren't they? Playing the wood and playing the spare. Candlepin Stars and Strikes on WNDS-TV. Our director today is Kevin LaFond on graphic Cheryl Sylvia. Keith Jedlicka is handling the replay machine. Keith Webb is our engineer. Mike Hayes on audio. Matt DiFilippo, David Lawyer, and Kevin Sheehan. Our camera operators making it possible for you to watch the finest Candlepin bowls in the world. Here on WNDS-TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Now in its 20th season. Great spare. Watch it again. 
Seven pins to pick up on the spare. And he got the wood flying. Great shot by Steve Flynn. And a strike to follow it. Well, when you're on fire, you're on fire. Jeff Surrett answers. I told you these are the best candlepin bowlers in the world, didn't I? Jeff on the strike. One, three. Six and eight. Picks off the one and the three. I'm sorry, the one and the eight. Three, six remain. <laughs> Betty Meharg of Lynn, Massachusetts, writes in. And I want to acknowledge her note. Steve Plant. A nine pin drop on the strike, looking for three marks in a row to start the third string. And $50 in bonus money. He had $125 in bonus money in the second string. So now he's up to $175. More importantly, he's distancing himself from Jeff Surrett. Missed the head pin, but look at this, they come back. Well, he got it. When you're hot, you're hot. The ball came back to take it. Four marks in a row. We go into the break and everything's falling right for Steve Plant. We continue from Lena Lanes in Nashville right after this on WNBS TV's Candleton Stars and Strikes. <laughs> Jeff Surratt on lane 34 with a little bit of a mountain to climb, a 61 pin lead for Steve Plant, plus a ball for Steve Plant. Four marks in a row to start the third string for Steve. He had six consecutive marks in the second string on his way to a 163. 400 is not an issue right now. It's how high into the 400s will it be? And that'll be a nine box for Jeff Surrett. Over the course of the summer, Jeff Surrett winning the Tom Morgan Memorial Tournament. Uh, Tom Morgan passed away a year ago, September. And in his memory, the Tom Morgan Memorial Tournament was won by this fine young Candlepin bowler, Jeff Surrett. Congratulations. And most recent uh, Pro Tour win was back in February in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Well, Jeff first. missed the spare. While Steve is making impossible shots, Jeff's not getting the same breaks. Ten box for Jeff right there. 74 through six. Steve Plant with four marks in a row. Wife Brenda is in the audience. They've been married 15 years and have a daughter, Amanda, who is 10. Steve likes to collect baseball cards. Not real active uh, doing that these days. He says it's an expensive hobby, but well, Steve's got a little baseball card buying money here from his bonus money and his, well, he'll probably advance the next week. Our runner up today, by the way, $200. And uh, the winner goes on to play Chris Sargent, who's number three seed next week. Well, Steve's not gonna make the mark there. He tried to play the wood and send it across the lane. He did send it from left to right, taking out the 10 pin, but the seven pin still stands. And a 10 box. An 86 half, he had a 98 half last string. That was a nice pocket hit. For a southpaw bowler, it is the one and the three, as opposed to the one, two. First pins he's left standing this game. 94 in the sixth, 20 pin lead in this game over Jeff Surratt and 68 overall.
Makeable shot here for Jeff. He made it. If you'd like to send us an email, there's the address. Bowling at WNDS.com. Simple enough, we'd love to hear from you. Try to read as many letters as we can and as many emails as we can each week. And there's the address, Jeff Surrett with a 10 box. Plant uh, steering the ball a little too far to the right leaves the four horsemen on the left side. One, two, four, seven. A piece of wood is touching the four pin. And that's Not the one that makes the four horsemen. Well, Steve's comfortably in control, though. And that'll be a ten box. Putting him at 104. He's at 401 with three boxes remaining. This may be the longest stretch he's gone without a mark. Yep. Second time he's done it at the end of the second string. And the first box of the second string, yeah. And there goes the 10 pin to break up the split. So he'll have a spare opportunity here if the wood squares away. The piece of wood on the right is problematic unless it rolls out of the way. It, it is out of the way, I believe. And a spare for Steve Plant in the eighth frame. 114 plus a ball. And an insurmountable lead for Steve Plant over Jeff Surrett. Steve will climb the ladder. He'll take on Chris Sargent next week. And Jeff Surrett, it's only the first ladder series of the season. You can almost expect oh, he'll be back. Count on it. Tournament of Champions winner last spring for $2,000. An eight box. He's at 109. He's at 358. There's a punch out. The spread eagle minus the 10 pin. There they go. At this point, tough to get much reaction out of Jeff. Disappointed in his. Uh, his performance overall, I would imagine, with only four marks this string, averaging 128 these days, he'll be right about on his average, or just a shade under. And that'll be a nine box, a nine in the spare, rather, for Jeff. And a 128 third string, and a three string total of 377. Steve Plant finishing it out. Puts seven in the mark. Looking for some more bonus money here. Bounced it down, picks up the spare. So he's an opportunity for bonus money right now. And a big triple for Steve Plant. Ooh, and a half Worcester. Doesn't really matter at this point. Academic. Cost Academic. of 50 bucks, perhaps. Well, the way he's been making shots today, you don't ever want to rule anything out with this guy. Now he's at 140 right now. 142 for Steve Plant. A three-string total of 439. A 62 pin win over Jeff Surratt. Surratt, the defending. Tournament of Champions winner last year. We'll have to come back to another ladder series to make the Tournament of Champions this time around. We'll come back to meet our bowlers when we continue from Lena Lanes in Nashua on WNDS TV's Candlepin Stars and Strikes. A terrific performance by Steve Plant winning our first match of the new season with a 439 triple to Jeff Surrett's 377. Steve Plant was really on fire. Tell you what, as soon as he started connecting real thin on the head pin, he was just sweeping them off the, wall, the side walls. Then when you start hitting too direct, you punch out. So he was better staying either side of the head pin, which was part of his success today. Pretty good payday for Steve. We'll talk with him in just a minute. But first, let's bring up our runner-up this afternoon, Jeff Surrett. Jeff from Tewksbury, Massachusetts, will join us. Jeff, congratulations. We'll give you our 
runner-up prize of $200, uh, not as much as you won last year in our Tournament of Champions in the season, <laughs> but I was talking to your dad after the match, and he said you're planning on making the rest of the Lattice Series during the course of the year. You'll be here again. Oh, uh, yeah, I figure, you know, I'll just lose and keep coming back every lot. I get more money. Getting into the, uh, the, the final five was interesting for you because you were way out of the field. Although the bowlers were bunched very closely together, I guess on your final string you kind of snuck in, huh? Yeah, I figured one big string would get me in, so I ended up throwing a 145, so barely snuck in, but I'll take it. What's going through your mind as you watch an opponent put six marks together as you saw Steve do in the second string? Uh, basically to pick one and uh, try and jump on it, but he was unstoppable today. You uh, were the winner of the first Tom Morgan Memorial uh, Tournament, uh, memorializing the late, great Tom Morgan who passed away about a year ago. Uh, that must have meant something to you to be the first winner of this, this very nice tournament. Yeah, it meant a lot, being friends with Mike, being a teammate with him. Uh, something I wanted to win, and luckily I did. Congratulations on that, and good luck. By the time people are watching this, or sometime during October, you'll be in Canada representing uh, Massachusetts in a, a tournament. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, it's a 10 string tournament. It's the uh, ICBA championships. Uh, it's 10 strings and uh, I'm representing Mass. There's one from Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, and Canada. And hopefully I'll come out on top. Is this for trophy or is there money involved? Uh, basically, no money. Just, uh, I don't know, for fun, I guess. It's great to, to promote Candleton Bowling, to go out to the bowling centers and let a lot of the people who just bowl in the leagues come out and watch the professionals. That's got to be a nice feeling. Oh, yeah, it's great having people watching. It's, you know, better to do well, but right. can't you like the to time. have the crowd behind you. Jeff, congratulations. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Jeff Thank Serrera, you, Jeff. our runner up here this afternoon to Steve Plant. Now we're going to do the bonus ball contest a little bit differently this year. We're going to reach into the bin first. We'll pull out a card, match it up with uh, uh, a number, and let our bowler know what number he's shooting for and see if we can uh, come up with a winner. Dorothy Merrill of Goffstown, New Hampshire. She picked seven. Now it's up to Steve Plant to see if we can come up with a seven-pin drop in our bonus ball contest. A five, a consolation prize from NNR Trophies <laughs> in Winchenden, Massachusetts for Dorothy Merrill of Goffstown, New Hampshire. will bring Steve Plant over to join us here on stage. Steve, congratulations Thank to you. you. A 439 triple, $200 in bonus money, $50 for having the high string in the match. You were on a roll there. Yeah, well, it felt pretty good. I got into a groove after I started slow, and I was being lazy to start. I didn't want to overthrow, especially where he threw two marks in a row, and then I just picked it up after that. So Very good. first string, he rolls a couple of marks. You missed a couple of marks, a couple of spare opportunities. You're down right off the bat. What's going through your mind? Well, I knew I was being lazy with the ball, and again, I just didn't want to overthrow, because if I was overthrow, I'd be punching all day, so I started slow and then worked my way up, so it felt good. You were telling me uh, before the match today that you and uh, Jeff had bowled each other on a previous, I think it was Friday, and that he uh, beat you substantially. Yes. Is that anywhere in the back of your mind, you just wipe the slate clean when, when the lights go on today? No, no, I just, that was just for fun. That was yeah. uh, our regular league, and um, I wiped the clay, slate clean. Well, you're, of course, a seasoned professional of the TV show. Of, you were here a year and a half ago, and today you bowled about 80 pins better than you did, did against Danny Harris. Now the key is, of course, to keep it going for three more weeks. Well, I hope so. I can stay in that groove. It'd be nice. Now, Mike and I were talking during the course of the match about your effort to buy the audience here today <laughs> to get them supporting you and, and behind you by passing out product. Well, I do that every show I come to, and it, it hasn't worked in the past. It happened to work today. It was great. So. He, Steve is a sales guy for uh, Frito-Lay, so we thank you for bringing the product, and uh, everybody's got Cheetos and everything else out there to make them happy. <laughs> yeah, well, I know the key now. It's Cheetos and smart food, so. <laughs> Up the ladder we go. It's Chris Sargent next week. Yes, sir. I know Chris very well. Very good bowler. Yeah, it should be a great match. Steve, yes, thanks very much. Look okay, forward to seeing you. you. Steve, see you then, Steve. Right, thank Steve Plant, our winner here this afternoon. He's the winner of the first match of the new ladder series of the new season and we climb the ladder one more rung we do and in a couple of weeks we're going to see a brand new bowler on candlepin stars and strikes by the name of